Hey there, happy new year. It is now 2024, which means two things for me. One, we're fast approaching April 2024, which will be my 10 year anniversary of uploading every single Sunday on this YouTube channel without fail. In April 2014, I made the decision, you know what, instead of just uploading sporadically, why don't I upload every Sunday? That's my goal. And so we're fast approaching that and there'll be some big changes on this YouTube channel, I think, we'll talk about later in this video. So that's coming soon. But also, as it is 2024, I've now officially been living in this flat for two years. I know, time goes by so fast. So I figured I'd use this video as a way to just talk about the mistakes that I've made in the last two years, the things that I've learned, uh, what my thoughts are about living in my own place in London, living alone, things such as this, as well as some New Year's resolutions as I do think it's a good idea to set intentions, whether or not you hit them, well, it's good to at least think about these things. So first off, if you're new here, you might not know that 2021 was a bit of a rough year for me. The last half of the year, I pretty much had no permanent place to stay. I was bouncing around different Airbnbs just to wait until I could get this place, if I would get this place. And that's why if you were watching my videos back then, I was always in some sort of different location, except mentally where I was always in the gutter. However, here we are, I've made it. Now, 2022 was a year in which I spent the entire year building out my flat, painting the walls, doing DIY, building the furniture, making it my own home. And then 2023 has been really chill. I've just accepted this is my flat. I'm very happy with it and just got to live in it. The thing is though, initially I was really scared to have friends or family over to my flat because I'd spent so long making it so pretty and making it the way that I liked it that I was just really scared of having a party and then having someone spill wine on my sofa or break a chair or do those things that pesky guests like to do. But in my opinion, uh, this is one of my biggest learnings of the year. A home, no matter how nice it is, feels a bit hollow if you don't have anyone to share it with. Like, who cares if I've got a nice place to watch TV or a nice dining room if I don't have friends over to enjoy that with me, you know? I, in 2023, had loads of friends over. I've had dinner parties. I've had friends over to just watch films together. And it's been really, really lovely. And you know what? If something goes wrong, if someone breaks something, if someone spills something, that's life. This is a home. I'm not trying to live in some sort of open air museum that never has any mistakes. Any sort of issue where like I dropped a knife on my floor and I'm like, no, it's patina. You know, any sort of mistake like, oh crap, I put the hot pan on the wooden thing and now there's a mark. It's patina. It shows yeah, you, it's been lived in, okay? And on a similar vein, I get so much more joy out of the things around my flat that I did myself through DIY rather than just paying for someone else to do it. I think that makes a lot of sense whenever you get something from Ikea and you build it yourself, you feel more pride in the item rather than if you just go into a big box store and just bought a sofa. But if I hold a light up to certain parts of my wall, I will see the paint streaks, which at first made me a little sad, like, oh gosh, I tried my best. I watched all these videos trying to paint to a professional standard, but then I realized, I'm not a professional. These people do this for a living. They're professionals at it. If I actually had that ability from watching a few YouTube videos, well, I should quit my job as a YouTuber and just become a painter. But all these imperfections really are what make my place feel perfect to me. I did it myself. No, it's not up to a professional standard, but that's only if you're you know, nitpicking and looking into it with excruciating detail. I'm looking around and I'm just proud of what I've got here and I'm really happy with it, imperfections and all. Boy, I hate how dark it gets. I swear, guys, it's like 3 p.m. right now and sun's gone. <laughs> but actually, speaking of lighting, that's actually something else that I learned uh, by getting this place. So when I viewed this place, it was in the summer. There was so much light, natural light, just flooding into this space. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then winter came around. And obviously you have much less daylight during the winter months in the UK and the Northern Hemisphere. But what I didn't realize was that even though I thought I had chosen the right side of the building to make sure I had more natural light, what I didn't factor in was, well, London residential blocks and skyscrapers. They're going to be blocking it. So I now, using a free app I recommend called Sunseeker, I'm able to see when I will have sun in my house, uh, which I do use for happiness sake, because just having a little bit of extra natural light in the house does actually make me happy. I like looking at the way that the light falls on things and it's good for photography and, just if, you know, you wanna make sure your plants get real happy, put them in the right spots. But it's been a fascinating little learning adventure on finding out just how the sun moves throughout the sky in the summer, the spring, and being able to study how it affects the lighting in my flat. Instead of being really upset about having a decreased amount of lighting, it's more just, a constant presence, an interest in, oh, the light is now coming in from this angle at this time of day. And it helps me just appreciate it in all seasons, if that makes sense. Now, one thing I've always been confused by is you you'll see these videos online of like some celebrities showing their massive place. And I've always wondered like, 
who needs that much space? They'll have like six different living rooms. And I'm like, I get that you're really famous and you have a lot of money, so you can have this space. But I don't know, it just feels like this presentation of a living room rather than an actual home. And I always wonder, even if you had ins an insane amount of friends, you wouldn't be able to share the same room with them. There's just all these rooms. Wouldn't you rather be able to share the same space with them, not put them out on one of your eight outdoor verandas? Ah. That being said, I feel like it is human nature to always want just a little bit more than what you have. Even though the place that I have is so much larger than my previous space, which was just a bedroom and a lot of shared spaces, now all I would want in my next space is extra storage, a closet. Oh gosh, what I'd give for a closet. Just some sort of storage facility here to put things. In a positive sense, because I have nowhere to put things, it means I have to be way more considered of each and every item that I buy, which is good because I already am like that. I feel like by researching heavily each item that I get from my space, I care more about each item. I know more about its pros, its cons, and I care for it a bit more effectively rather than just being, oh, it's just a wooden spoon. It's like, oh no, this is a very nice wooden spoon that I spent time researching and now I use it to mix things. I know that sounds neurotic, because it is, <laughs> but for me, I, I find that it's just really helpful for me making the space nicer and more of my own that I'm very particular about everything that I have here. Now, pretty much every year of my adult life, sans the last two years, was spent living with other flatmates, having a house share. Worst of it probably being my first year here where I moved for university, and I had a small single bedroom where nine other single beds were attached to a long hallway and then a shared kitchen living space for 10 people. Student accommodation is not the one. I know we've all gone through it, but oh my God, I no longer have to worry about saying, hey, who stole my Pop-Tarts that I got from the Bullring Primark and nobody wants to confess? I, I don't, I still don't know. I don't know. I literally bought these Pop-Tarts and put them in my cupboard and someone opened them and ate all of them. Why? I had to go to Birmingham for that. <laughs> but that is an extreme case of living with 10 people you don't really know. I've lived with a best friend. I've lived with three friends. I've lived with six friends. And of all of those, I feel like there is a happy medium here compared to living alone at least. Sure, when I was living with other people, I dreamt of being able to just not clean up after myself and not face any repercussions or just being able to cook whenever I want in the kitchen and not have someone taking up the kitchen space or just throw something on the television and not have anyone be like, oh, I'm watching something on the television. Now it's my space. I can put whatever I want in the walls. No one can stop me. But boy, there is actually a huge benefit to having that social element. You know, maybe I'm having a stressful day. I can just go downstairs and have a chat, catch up with someone. That's so nice. Or one of the things I really didn't expect to miss watching content with other people immediately. I mean, when the new Stranger Things season came out this past year, I immediately turned it on the TV and went, oh, I'm so excited to, oh. Oh, this is the first time I'll be watching this alone. For me, the show was so social. I'd always just throw it on the TV and got the flatmates around and we would all just watch it together. And now if I wanted to do that type of thing, well, it's not as easy as just going downstairs. Now I'd have to like text some people. Oh, you're busy today? What about tomorrow? Oh, but now he's not busy. And now it's, you know, more separate. There's now a lot more bureaucracy involved in just getting people together. And that is something I miss, being able to just watch, being able to just talk. You know, those are the positive elements that I have. If I'm thinking honestly about it though, the ideal situation for me would be just living with one other person, significant other, that would be nice, maybe for 2024. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You get a lot of the benefits of living alone, but with someone that truly understands you, and as long as you have top tier communication, then it's literally an ideal situation. So we shall see. I feel like anyone that lives with their significant other is also probably saying the same thing right now. Like, of course, this is way better than when I lived with flatmates or when I lived alone. In my opinion, for me at least, that feels like the ideal scenario. Now, this is pretty much a bachelor pad in a way. I designed this place completely for myself and I never really planned on changing anything because I, I, I built it, I was, this is how I want it. But there are some things, maybe I could add a couple wardrobes because storage for other people might be beneficial. So those are the things I'm planning to change throughout the year. I saw a post on Reddit this week where someone said, anyone sharing photos of their flat in which it's looking really nice, clean, pristine, they're just really fake. You should show it how it really is. And I found that a really interesting post because I think I probably would have thought that as well before I got into a good cleaning reg regime in this place. Back where I used to live, you could probably tell if you looked in the background of certain shots, I didn't really live as clean as possible. I cleaned up every once in a while, but I more or less had a system of let it build up, then clean it. Let it build up, then clean it. So it was rarely ever really in that clean state. Whereas these days I realize 
it really only takes me five minutes to clean each room. So rather than just let it build up, I actually just tidy it once a day just to make sure it's clean. I clean up as I go. This is a really difficult skill for me because it took me so long to develop it, but I spent so long making my flat look so nice. Wouldn't it be just awful if I just have it look like crap? Like what was the point of all this? So five minutes, just put everything away. I feel like the kitchen is the most annoying. You know, it's just, it does take a while to clean dishes, even with the dishwasher. Oh. And yeah, depending on the state of my mental health, things will actually build up and that just makes things worse. So I know I just have to tidy up more often and then, you know, at least that's one less stressor on the bad brain. Hello, Evan Editor here. Uh, so I just felt like I really needed to add since it's a video about things I love and hate about my London flat. I seem to be mostly talking about all the stuff that I love. There's a couple gripes here and there, but I think it's because to me, it feels like complaining that your filet mignon steak at a gourmet restaurant was a bit too medium when you wanted medium rare. You know, it's, uh, I'm just very happy with the, the place that I have regardless. Uh, if I did want to find things to complain about, well, I think you all know I live in a London flat. The service charge is astronomically high. It is disgusting. It's actually gone up by 85% in a year. And that is because the uh, developer forgot to uh, have a sinking fund initially or probably lied about it in order to bring more people in either way that's my life so service charge not not bueno all right it's a bit windy in the area but the service charge is blowing all my money away um but yeah that's that's annoying <laughs> Everything else though is pretty great. Uh, I have another video coming out eventually about the leasehold scam. So I look forward to that. I'll be talking about uh, this tactic that the uh, developer did and some more. Anyway, uh, continue on with the video. But house stuff aside, I always like to set uh, resolutions every single year. And yeah, I might shoot for the stars and fall amongst the clouds. That's just how I am. But this year, I think I'm being a bit more realistic because I'm very proud of the growth that I was able to get through 2023. Not through being super strict and doing everything the way I wanted, but more just trying to be a bit better, not making sure I hit the gym seven days a week, unrealistic. Instead, I aimed to hit three days a week and I did. And multiple times I actually hit four days a week. I am probably the fittest I've ever been in my entire life. I've broadened my chest. I've got biceps now, quads are sticking out. Wow, thank God. I've been working on this for so long. Tall people problems, but also I, I struggle to eat a lot. I, I'm never really that hungry and as someone that's as tall as me trying to put on weight for muscle mass, you just have to eat so much. <laughs> so that is something that I am working on uh, in 2024 is just eating a lot more and bulking up and uh, hopefully maybe by summer I'll be able to have like some sort of six pack ab. You know, one can dream. Okay, I'm, I'm working towards it, so we'll see. Now, as many of you are probably aware of, every year I like to set really lofty goals for my language learning to be like, oh, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, when that's such a big leap over the 10 to 15 minutes a day I usually spend that probably isn't going to happen, and then it's going to make me feel upset I'm not spending as much time. But in 2023, I did move to Germany for a month, I did progress my German a significant amount, which is great, but as soon as I got back, I was feeling super inspired. Oh yes, here's the time. I'm gonna actually progress and maintain my German and I'm gonna do it every day and, well, I, that just didn't really, nothing really uh, came from that, did it? I came back, I kept doing Spanish and I've let my German fall by the wayside. Uh, one of the th reasons for that being that pretty much at my level of B2, the main way of maintaining or growing is by reading books, watching TV shows, and anything else that's purely in German, which takes a specific mindset and a lot of time, which I don't necessarily have all the time. So luckily, a brand reached out to me that has a solution for me, and that is Babbel. Now, Babbel have been wanting to sponsor my channel for a long time. They have a German course that goes all the way up to C1. I took their little placement test to see where my language learning would go for German to see if they were going to be right or wrong, and surprise, surprise, they put me in B2. I've taken a couple courses now, and I'm like, oh, great. This is actually a huge focus on grammar, the, the stuff that I need to learn to progress from B2 to C1, which is really exciting. And I'm sure Babbel is actually keen to let you know that they don't just do higher levels of German. They go from A1 to C1 in 14 different languages, and they're an all-encompassing way to learn the language of your choice in 2024 with games, podcasts, and more. But I'm just talking about the stuff that I'm really interested in, which is the idioms, the, the grammar, and also a really big feature that I'm hoping to talk about in my next video, talking about Babbel in February after I get some more time to play with it, because I think it's going to be a game changer for how I'm learning languages. But if you'd like to join me and hopefully learning a new language this year, you can sign up to Babbel and subscribe to a language of your choice, or use my link in the description to get 50% off a lifetime membership to all languages on Babbel. That is quite a deal. But anyway, thank you very much to Babbel for sponsoring, and hopefully 
hopefully uh, my German improves greatly over this next month. I'll keep you updated. So talking of music, every year I'm like, I want to get better at learning piano. Luckily, I had a very chilled approach this year. I was like, I'm just going to try and finish my piano book and then see where, what comes from that. And that actually worked out. I finished my piano book. I moved on to the second one and I've been a bit slow at it and I haven't necessarily practiced every day, but I have practiced. I put in the time. And a lot of times during uh, autumn this past year, I'd procrastinate from doing things I need to do by practicing piano, which is kind of lovely in a way, this thing that, no, I'm not monetizing it. I'm not being like, hey guys, look at me play piano, though I've, I have played piano in three different outros, but it's more just an outlet for me to enjoy learning something that I've always wanted to play. And so I have been keeping with that and I'm going to keep up with that in 2024 as well. In terms of, I made a song and I still haven't gotten it produced in three to four years. I've made the most progress I've ever made in that avenue. And so 2024, I'm very confident I will actually be releasing that song to you, fully produced, hopefully sometime in the summer. I'm really confident I'm gonna be working with someone and making my own music video. And I understand that that's not the type of content I usually upload on this channel. And so it will probably not do well, but I couldn't give two shits. I mean, obviously I'd love people to watch it, but also it's just an ability to express myself and share this song that I made. And that's really all the, the, the main thing that I care about. So yeah, that's exciting. And in terms of my YouTube channel, big changes coming as I am approaching my 10 year anniversary of the weekly uploads. One, I am going to be chopping off all my hair, not obviously to the, the bald state, but just going back to a really short haircut and figuring it out from there. One of the reasons being, I actually didn't expect just how many comments I would get about my hair that were unasked for, like at all. Uh, you know, I just thought I wanted to see what I looked like with longer hair and just kept letting it grow out and got lazy and didn't really, you know, get it cut. But man, I'll upload a video about any old, any old topic and I will just get so many comments like, I love your hair. I hate your hair. Never get a haircut. Get a haircut. I've never asked for this opinion. I've never asked. And if I did, then I, I'd hope they'd be reserved on that specific video where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about my hair right now. But man, it's not just a YouTube thing either. I'll go to pick up packages at the post room and I'll have the, the person there just be like, look at you and your long hair. I don't know. I think this is just a thing of guys having long hair where it's just an immediate thing where everyone wants to talk about it. And you might say, oh, Evan, you're some sort of YouTuber with 750,000 subscribers. You probably love that. I really don't, actually. I, I don't necessarily just want comments on the way that I look. You know, I produce content. I, I make things and I'm, I'm happy to make people laugh or entertain or educate in some way. But man, I, I just, I, I don't actually care too much for all the comments about my hair. When I had short hair, never a comment. No one talked about it. It was just, it was just part of my head, you know, who cares? But I just want to go back to that, actually. So I'm probably going to be cutting it uh, before April. We'll see. I'll have it be short and then maybe have it be like mid-length. I don't know. I don't think it matters as much as everyone else thinks it does, but it actually affects my mental health, weirdly enough. Plus, man, having long hair, they don't tell you. It pulls when you're sleeping, you know, it gets all over the place. It's like I have a cat. There's hairs all over the place. Got to vacuum more. No, <laughs> I, I miss the short hair life, but I like the way it looks, but... Uh, that's enough about hair, okay? That's neither hair nor there. <laughs> so for the longest time, I thought maybe as soon as it comes up to April, 2024, I would stop uploading weekly. Not that I would stop uploading what, you know, completely, but just that I would break the streak on purpose so that I'm no longer imprisoned by it and I can spend a lot more time working on bigger videos. And I've come up against that wall multiple times and I don't fully know if I'll do it yet because it really just depends on how my brain is during a given moment. I'll have a week in which I'm the most productive person ever. And I'm like, oh, why was I stressed last week? Can't remember. I'm killing it. I'm getting all ahead. And then I'll have other weeks in which I'm just unable to work for an hour, two hours a day because my brain feels like uh, it's like sludge coming out of my ears. I have no energy. I don't know what's going on. So I just go in waves like that uh, of uh, bad mental health to good mental health. Depends on when I'm at. One of the big goals I have of 2024 is actually, <laughs> this is a goal I have every year, working with an editor more so that I can have someone edit some of my videos to give me more time to do the more heavily researched videos. That being said, looking at 2023, a lot of the videos that did the best were the ones in which I just came up with on the fly and filmed. Uh, videos about the recent news stuff that I've been doing on my channel December have been doing really, really well, which I, I find surprising. So I'm like, okay, I, I can implement a bit more of that alongside the other things I wanna make videos about, but it's definitely not a bad problem to have to have too much content that you're interested in making. 
Uh, the only bottleneck is me because it takes me a long time to edit. Speaking of editing, I've changed up my editing style. If you haven't noticed, I've t stripped back a lot of the things that I implemented because I was like, ooh, anytime a graphic comes in, needs to slowly come in and animate, keyframe, move out. That takes a lot more time for not as much added value. So now I still do that every once in a while, but sometimes I'm like, I just want the graphic there. It doesn't necessarily matter. I do a lot more split screen editing. My editing is always changing with how I'm feeling and how I feel will best convey in a more engaging way, the content I'm trying to make. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm really loving YouTube still. So in, ter in terms of like, oh no, you're gonna quit. Do you not like this? I still really like what I'm doing. I always find really interesting uh, differences between lots of different things. And that's what I wanna make videos about. So. I'm gonna keep doing that into the new year. Otherwise, I'm hoping to make a few more London-centric videos because I live in London and I love London. Maybe some uh, just train stuff because I also like trains. So stay tuned for that in your subscription feed as long as you know you're subscribed to my channel where I make new videos every Sunday. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully you have a really great new year yourself. If you'd like to share in the comments any of the goals you'd like to have for 2024, I'm all ears, give them to me. But if you somehow missed my last video about how nearly 100,000 Brits just saved the metric system in the UK, I will link that above for your viewing pleasure. See you next week. Bye.